You can turn in your King James Bible to the book of Romans, chapter 15. A real good study for you today. A study that uh, I will give the Lord credit for before I even begin on this. Because I had in my mind what I wanted this sermon to be about. I already had it all planned. thought a good uplifting sermon for the brethren. And it will be very uplifting. But as I was going through it, and I was going from Scripture to Scripture, and the Lord's putting Scriptures into my mind, all of a sudden it was this thing, and the Lord just started to show me some things in this study, and I thought, wow, okay, Lord, all right, you took this study in a completely different direction. I was not planning on this. It's always a good thing when the Lord does that. But we'll start out here in Romans chapter 15 and begin in verse 1. <clears throat> we then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. I'll just stop there. I apologize in advance if I mess up at all badly in this sermon because I got, had a pretty rough night of sleep. Been having some weird, you know, nightmare issues and things and spiritual attacks. I'm so used to it anymore. It's just kind of, oh, here we go again. But uh, so I'll apologize in advance if I act a little nutty. But um, <clears throat> bear the infirmities of the weak. Verse 2, let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached, reproached thee fell on me. Uh, the things that happen to Jesus Christ are going to happen to you, Christian. Uh, Christianity is not life enhancement. It's not, well, I you know, was missing something. There was a, a Jesus-shaped hole in my heart, and, and Jesus came in and filled the hole. No. Um, <clears throat> the bad things that happen to Jesus will happen to you. Never forget that. Verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. Your comfort will come from this book, brethren. And that's one of the greatest, that is the, not one of, that is the greatest proof for the inspiration, the divine inspiration of this book, is the book itself. That's circular reasoning. It's not circular reasoning. It's called putting a book to the test. And all of a sudden you start to read this book and you start to, when you get saved, you'll notice that your life experiences are lining up with this book. And you're not trying it. You're not trying to pretend that you're a Christian or something. Bad things will start to happen. The times of joy will be there. The times of sorrow. The times of, of loneliness. The times of, of fear and worry and doubt and whatever else. And you read the Bible and they're going through that. The, the times of uh, not sleeping too good at night and the, the health issues that how do I fix this? How do I cure this? And all those different things. People casting out your name is evil. But you know what? You can have comfort of the scriptures because the scriptures present hope. The uh, blessed hope. Just to give you a little bit of a clue as to where this study is going to be going. Next, let's go to Matthew chapter 9. You know, I like to do word studies, if you haven't noticed that yet, and um, <clears throat> go through the scriptures and you look at just a, one word, just pick a word and go through the concordance and you go and you look at every time it appears in scripture and you'll be amazed at what the Lord will show you. I think that's the best way to preach and teach from this King James Bible is just to look at the words, um, go through and see what the Bible has to say. Not commentaries and all the other stuff. Commentaries are fine. I have plenty of them. And others over here this way and down there and whatever. But um, it's always about the book. Personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 9 verse 20 through 22. Let's read that. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Hmm. Be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that very or from that hour. Huh. She received good comfort because of her faith in the Word of God. You say, Well, you mean the Bible? I mean Jesus Christ capital W, Word of God. But uh, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, lowercase w. You can't have a right relationship with Jesus Christ and reject this King James Bible. Can't happen. Uh, I've known a lot of uh, professing Christians over the years, 
And every single time I see one that hates this book and that just says any Bible version will do and whatever else, uh, there's some major problems there. I have seen it for many years, a long time. Her faith is what made her whole, and that's something that she could receive comfort. Comfort of the scriptures. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You see how it works? I have faith that I'm on the right, in the right system, in the right belief system, and whatever else. You know why? Because I have a book. And this book has been proved to me time and time again. You look at the edges of the pages there, it's, you know, all worn off and, and things for me flipping through this book. You go to the front and it's, it's all taped together and everything else. I got duct tape in there, you know. Um, I remember my grandfather used to say, and I don't think it was his original comment, but, uh, or saying, but he used to say a Bible that's falling apart belongs to someone who isn't. A lot of truth in that. But this old Bible has been with me. It's, I've climbed mountains with this book in, the, in my backpack. I've been out and it started to rain and I had to shield the, the Bible. Um, this Bible's been with me for a long time. And uh, different people say, I oh, should get it rebound. You could get a new cover and whatever. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but it's been with me for so long. I have a special relationship with this book. So you're replacing Jesus Christ with it. No, I'm defining Jesus Christ with the Word of God. I don't define Jesus Christ up here in my brain, you see. And you know what it is? It's a great comfort. You get out there in this world and there's all these wicked people and they say, what about this? What about that? What about this? We, you know, <clears throat> the Catholic Church, uh, what about Erasmus? He was the one that, that wrote the text that underlies the King James Bible. And, and uh, what about this? The Anglicans that were there and, and there was some Masonic signature stuff. And what about this? And what about that? And, and they try to d destroy your faith. Well, we have proved evolution to be true. We have proved that, uh, you know, certain animals and plants evolved and, and things. And so your God can't be real. Uh, we've proved that all the events of the uh, book of Revelation happened in the first century, so there's nothing to look forward to. Futurism is a lie. And all, you know, all these things, all these doubts, all these objections. You know where you need to go? To kingjamesvideoministries.org. The holy, most reverend Brian Dunlinger will lead you into all truth. No, no, don't come here. I mean, you can come here and watch the videos and learn, but I'm not perfect but I have a book that is. You're to have good comfort through the scriptures and you put your trust in the scriptures and the written word of God. Learn from me, certainly. Learn from other preachers if they're using this King James Bible and they don't question it. They don't come through and say, well, a better rendering would be, and I have to clarify this, this is it's not really as clear as it could be and the Greek is you know, much better and it, pff, shut them off. Don't waste your time with them. They're trying to, Remove your authority from what you can hold in your hands and plainly read and live. Be very careful about those types of false prophets. Um, my whole point is, brethren, you're supposed to have comfort through the scriptures. And that scriptures, that what's written in here gives you hope for the future. And you get some devil coming along and he says, man doesn't actually go to heaven, you know that. Well, I have to study my Bible about that. I've never heard this before. It's kind of weird. Uh, <clears throat> you're not really saved by calling upon the name of the Lord. Did you know that? Well, that kind of contradicts what the Bible plainly says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13. And, well, that's not actually written to you. Uh, Christians aren't actually born again. Did you know that? <laughs> and you start to think, are there any other real Christians out here? You know, you start to kind of get a little lonely and, and things. And then you actually read the Bible and it's, hmm. Only Luke is with me, says Paul. Another place he names six men. They're the only ones that are there working with Paul. Paul wasn't attending some big, huge Baptist church someplace and uh, Paul touring around, speaking, you know, preaching the same sermon over and over again to get the crowds in and get their money. Uh, that's not New Testament Christianity. That's something else that was created after the New Testament was written. But let's go to Mark chapter 10. Comfort, brethren, that's what this whole study is about. And there's a lot of people that uh, they can claim all they want to, that they have comfort in Jesus Christ, that, oh, I have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and whatever. And, but then you actually start to hear who their Jesus is, and you say, what? Uh, that's not the Jesus of the Bible. 
My comfort comes from the scriptures. Yours comes from your own mind. Sorry about that. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Now here's where it gets interesting. Here's where the Lord just messed up my sermon outline, just took it the way He wanted it to go, and then He didn't let me get back to my original sermon outline. And uh, it's wonderful. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried the more a great deal, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they call the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise. Huh. He calleth thee. Get back to that here in a minute. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. If you've been a Bible believer for a while, you know exactly where I'm going with this. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. Continue. Verse 52. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Wow. <laughs> and I went through that and I read that and uh, the Lord said, You see that in the one verse? Well, yeah, that's just one thing. What about that over there? Huh. It does kind of look like that to catching up with the body of Christ, doesn't it? And the Lord said, you keep reading. <laughs> and this one and that one and all these different things. And you start to think, oh, wow. Boy, that's really profound. Mm -hmm. Let's go through it. First and foremost, a blind man called out to Jesus, blind Bartimaeus. Hmm. Jesus commanded the blind man to rise and be comforted. Huh. The blind man cast away his garment, rose, and came to Jesus. Interesting. The blind man is given the ability to see. Let's look at how this lines up with the scriptures. First Thessalonians chapter 4. You can stay and put a marker there or whatever in Mark chapter 10. We might come back to that. But um, <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter 4. And don't worry. The word comfort will be tagging along for the study. I'm not abandoning it. I care about com or, uh, comfort's feelings, yeah. Not Ray comfort, but uh, <laughs> there's got, that guy's got some major issues. But we won't get into that right now, will we? Uh, Ray Comfort's biggest issue, by the way, if you don't understand about the guy, he changes the Word of God, wrote his own uh, evidence Bible, I think it's called, or something, and changes the these and the thous and whatever else, which is a very serious error. That's number one problem. Number two is he meets so many false converts out there, and there's major issues with the guy, but again, and he tries to get them under a sort of a lordship salvation works to prove that they're saved type of a thing. Uh, which I don't teach. A lot of people lie about me. They'd say I teach that, and I don't. Good works come after salvation, not before. But it doesn't matter how many times I try to correct it. People just still lie about me. Evil report, the Bible calls it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. Let's begin there. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with, or with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. 
comfort. The comfort of Jesus Christ. Uh, what's it? You say, how's that relate to the thing of blind Bartimaeus? Because the Lord, when he hears him, he says, rise, come to me. And he does. Hmm. Um, if you study the second coming, Matthew chapter 24, Mark 13, Mark, or Luke 17 and Luke chapter 21, there's not one mention of anybody going up into the clouds. Not one. Jesus Christ comes in the clouds, mighty angels with him, which are a reference to the saints, if you want to get into the real big study there in the resurrection. They neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. We have Revelation chapter 19, you read that, and the saints are getting on white horses following Jesus and going down. Interesting, because uh, blind Bartimaeus, after his sight is received, he says, Jesus says to him, follow me. Hmm. Uh, a lot of de uh, great detail there. But my whole point is, you read through the gospel accounts of the second coming of Jesus Christ, and there's no mention of saints going up, being caught up into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Not one mention. You have to understand the difference between 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 58, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, Ephesians chapter 1. There's also some really good stuff about the resurrection of the body of Christ. It's not the same thing, okay? It's not, well, this would have to be the second coming then, and, the, and then the second coming passages would be the third coming. Nonsense. I've answered all that stuff for years, and people still don't get it because they're too lazy to actually watch all the doctrinal stuff I've put out. Can't help you. I mean, people that binge watch my videos, and they, they'll, you'll get under, understanding of the whole doctrine, uh, doctrinal stand of the resurrection being before the time of Jacob's trouble gets started, or people would call it the pre-trib rapture, You'll get it, but it's a very deep doctrinal thing. It takes you a long time to study it and make all the connections with all the different scriptures. But people are so lazy and they come to watch some conspiracy video about the pre-trib rapture has been a lie. It's Jesuit futurism and whatever. And they go, oh, wow. They don't actually go through the scriptures and see if it really is a lie. It doesn't say search the YouTube videos. It says search the scriptures to see whether these things are so. Right? You go through the scriptures. Find a man that believes the book, that understands the book, that's actually saved, and then you'll listen to that guy and you say, okay, look at, see, is there another study where he goes into this section deeper or that thing deeper or whatever else? Yes, there is. Okay, I'm going to go watch that. I'll watch all of his stuff. I mean, before I made my very first video, I read a lot of books, a lot of them which you see behind me here, way down that way, over this way. There's some out in the hallway there. The whole hallway is books. I read a lot of books. I'm not some dumb, illiterate, you know, hillbilly that doesn't know anything. Right? I'm not trying to be prideful or anything else. I'm just saying I've been through these things. I've studied it. Right? It's so important to understand that. But you get, again, what do you see there? Their faith is what the Lord looks at their faith and says, okay, these people are saved. They're coming up. Come up hither. All right? And so uh, let's go to... 2 Corinthians chapter 5, next. Blind Bartimaeus had faith that the Lord would save him. Or not save him, I should say, but uh, that came later, I believe. Um, but, um, and of course, somebody will say, well, where did it come later? Well, I don't know if it specifically says him by name or whatever, but there was another blind man that got saved. I don't know, haven't done the, you know, whatever happened to blind Bartimaeus or something, but I doubt that he just had his eyes restored and then just kind of went, eh, you know, <laughs> I don't need to be saved now or something. Uh, probably one of the early Christians, I would guess. I don't know. But, um, you know, he had faith that the Lord could restore his sight. But let's look here at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven, if so that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing as God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, that's what it's talking about there, the tabernacle, your body of flesh, corruptible flesh, whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, 
not by sight. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Be of good comfort. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. You have to labor when you get saved. You have to do something for the Lord. Spend time watching these videos. Spend time in the scriptures with me, going through the scriptures. I never just stand there and say, well, you know, don't turn in your Bible or whatever. I quote scripture sometimes, and you might have to look those up because I don't always refer to every single thing that I quote. Just memory comes to me and I say, okay, I'll quote this verse or whatever. But look at the scriptures. Read along. Get a King James Bible. Paper King James Bible. Very important. Don't mess with stuff online because Lord only knows they can change that stuff at any time. All right? Paper King James Bible. And of course, you know, don't fall for the Mandela effect. That's another one of the idiotic nonsense things out there. It was a witch that came up with the whole thing. We debunked it thoroughly, showed all the connections and everything else. My wife and I, years ago, and I still get people in the comments, what about the Mandela effect? You can't trust the King James Bible. <laughs> yes, you can. But blind Bartimaeus, there he is, having to be led around and things, and he's there begging. What a terrible way to live. Wait, Jesus is coming? Jesus of Nazareth? I've heard that he can heal people. I believe by faith he can heal me. I want to get rid of these eyes that can't see, and I want to have eyes that I can see. That's what I want. Say, so you're blind? No, I'm not blind uh, physically. But a lot of times I'm blind spiritually. I don't know what all is going on and I can't see certain things. We'll get back to that here in just a few minutes. And it would be really nice to have spiritual eyesight so I could see things as the Lord sees things. You know, as you get older as a Christian, um, maybe at first you might think to yourself, oh, it's kind of harsh that the Lord would burn somebody for all of eternity in hell or the lake of fire, hell, and then they go into the lake of fire after Revelation chapter 20. You might think it's kind of harsh. But then as you get out there and you're studying how things really are in the world and you're seeing all this stuff, you start to think, that's eh, making more sense to me now. Uh, people really are that wicked. Your eyes are starting to become more enlightened as time goes by. You're starting to see things. And, you know, again, oh, that's the Illuminati. He's Illuminati because he said your eyes are enlightened. No, the Bible talks about that. The you know, eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Uh, the Illuminati steals that from the Bible. All right created by the Jesuit order, Adam Wieshaupt in Bavaria, Ingolstadt uh, University. Um, you will start to see things more like the Lord sees things as time goes by. And you'll start to realize, oh, that's why God does this. And, oh, okay. And again, I've studied a lot of stuff. You listen to my sermons. The Lord's shown me a lot over the years. My wife has studied a lot. We learn a lot, okay? But we always have to go back to the scriptures for our comfort, for our hope. Well, you know, the Bible says, well, the Bible says, I mean, if you get around us, we're fanatics. We're total fanatics. I'll just be real honest about that. We're crazy. Um, anybody that's known us in person, we talk about the Bible all the time. We really do. Uh, why? Because we're so spent with this world. I tried most of the stuff that the world had to offer. Thankfully, I never got into drugs or, you know, all kinds of weird perversions and things. Um, but, you know, I tried a lot of other stuff. There's no thrill. There isn't anything. Uh, the devil can't say, uh, you know, I'm going to tempt you uh, with some little thing out here or whatever else. Eh, no, let me get back to the Bible here. <sighs> the world doesn't have anything for me. I'm so messed up right now, <laughs> according to most people. Uh, that guy's nuts. That guy's weird and whatever else. Yeah, pretty much. A lot of you are like that too. Praise the Lord, you know what I mean? Second Peter chapter 1. But boy, there's times. There's times I sure wish I had the, the new tabernacle. The old temple of the Holy Ghost. This old body here. Uh, I abused it for a long time. There's a lot of times I, I go to get down and I think, okay, was that four times or five times that my knees popped <laughs> as I'm going down? And, you know, laying there at night and you lay there for a little while on your right side, you know, and it, okay, it's starting to hurt my lower back. Get up, I have to go to the bathroom and then 
get back into bed and you lay on your back for a while. Ah, it's starting to hurt my back. Okay, probably should get up and go to the bathroom again. <laughs> Rough shape. And then you turn on your left side, you know, you're there for a little while and oh, I laid on my arm wrong and, you, you know, you get up. Oh, man. Ah, ah. All right, you know, doing some work and you get up, go to get up. And I feel like an old man sometimes standing up on oh, my back and I'm thinking, I used to see my grandfather do this, man. I'm 48 years old. What happened? You know, well, Lord says, uh, remember those dirt bike rides and, you know, dirt bike accidents and you used to jump like that and things and all the junk food you used to eat. And, oh, yeah. You know, remember when you were logging, you know, you'd lift up things that were too heavy and mess up your lower back and you went to the chiropractor and the guy said, uh-oh, you have some discs down there that are disintegrating. Oh, yeah, that's why I have that pain. Yeah. Stupid, proud man. The sins of my youth. Now I'm paying for it. Earnestly groaning. Uh, you know, I don't believe in the imminent you know, return, the doctrine of imminence being that Jesus could have come at any time during the church age. I don't believe that. But I think we're getting so close now that it could actually be fairly imminent. I hope. But, you know, it's a great comfort to know that if I die at some point in time, I'm going to be going up first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. We just read back there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And if I make it the whole way through, if the Lord says, okay, I'm going to preserve you right up till the end, I'd like to be able to do that. I'd like to be able to be preaching the word of God right up until the last minute when the Lord says, come up hither. That'd be great. But boy, it's going to be nice. Look up, see the door open in heaven like John saw in Revelation chapter 4. And a voice like a trumpet says to me, come up hither. Come on up. Rise. Put off your garment. I get to get rid of this old body? <laughs> oh, boy. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Get up there. The Lord says, how do you feel now? Wow. Man, no back pain there? Oh, boy. You know, I feel really good. What's it going to be like to be in an incorruptible body? Can't even fathom it. Wow. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. Let's read that. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath showed me. Oh, I'm sorry. To stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ hath showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able, after my decease, to have these things always in remembrance. Hmm. You have to die at some point in time. You put off this old tabernacle. And, um, <clears throat> you know, uh, I used to do dumb things. And that's why I have a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. But you know what? Um, there's a lot of times that uh, I've given up exercise and I've given up other things to write sermon notes and to answer people's letters and whatever else. And I'm so far behind on that. Again, I'm sorry. There's times I've had to put my flesh down. There's times I've been in here working at my desk and I look outside and it's a beautiful sunny day and I think, boy, I sure wish I could be fishing or hiking or whatever else. And I, I get to do some of that stuff occasionally. You know, you have to make some time for that. But, you know, there's been many times I've sacrificed and you will too. Again, I'm not saying, you know, pat myself on the back here and, and I'm so much higher than you. No, no. What I'm saying is, I've gone through it, you will as well. The Apostle Paul, be followers of me, together of me, even as I also am of Christ Jesus. I'm going to be an ensample to you. Look at me, look at how I'm living. That's what you should expect. You're going to have financial hard times. You're going to have family and friends turn against you. You're going to have times where you will have pain. You know, that's what real Christianity is. You read the Bible and you have comfort from the scriptures. And I see so many professing Christians out there. Well, I don't really read the Bible as much as I should. Where's your comfort coming from? It just blows my mind. It's coming from outside the scriptures. It's kind of a problem. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Get back there. But you will put off your tabernacle one day this old body and you get a new one 
you know, and you have to make sure you don't get shipwrecked. Again, please understand what I'm saying here. You keep under your body and bring it into subjection. Bodily exercise profiteth little, the Bible talks about. You have to get some exercise. You have to keep things going. Put good food in. Um, I was feeling a little bit almost flu-like this morning. Chamomile tea, camu, camu, you know, powder. Whatever I have to do to try to increase vitamin C and increase other things. Bone broth soup, chicken soup and things. Do your best to keep this body going. But you are going, going to eventually get a new one. So don't get too nuts about it. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 through 12. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as, as also I am known. Blind Bartimaeus, what do you want? Lord, that I may see. Brian Denlinger, what do you want? Lord, that I may see. Uh, Brother Brian, what do you think is going to happen to America in the next year? Uh, probably some pretty bad stuff. Um, probably some violence and some uh, horrible things. And Lord only knows what they're going to do with the election coming up, election year coming up. I don't know. You can't understand it. You're a preacher. And, and, uh, yeah, I see through a glass darkly. I don't quite understand. Um, can you tell me who was really saved and who's not and whatever? Well, I can give pretty good idea if they're following the scriptures or in line with the scriptures well you probably trust that brother or that sister but there's some people question mark i don't know you know why because i see through a glass darkly i stumble around in the dark and i have to ask the lord please show me what to do here lord i have no idea i i don't know what to say I, you know when's the housing market going to correct you know, the house affordability, I saw there's some Yale professor now that came out and he said that uh, house prices are something like 123% above the normal average type of a thing when you have, you know, debt to income ratios and all the other stuff. And a lot of you out there, you're looking for a house. You'd like to find a place. It'd be nice for us to find a place. Uh, this old place here where we run the ministry, I can't live here. All kinds of problems with this place. Uh, not long ago, we were trying to get, take showers with a little battery-operated shower thing in the one room and, and uh, had some heaters going, and the heaters blew one of the old glass fuses, glass fuses that you screw in, you know, not the little flip type of inline fuse type of thing. Glass fuses. Uh, I didn't, I've never, you know, messed with those things before. I think my friend had a cabin the one time, and you had this glass fuse thing. You had to put it in and push this thing down or something to make the electric work. But uh, this place has got issues. Well, you know, and I'm not going to go out and, and get into debt or anything to get another place. You say, when, it, when are you going to get a place, brother? I, I don't know. Why? I see through a glass darkly. Um, there's a lot of things I don't understand. You just do your best, brethren. And you uh, can do your best because you can have comfort from the Scriptures. And let the Scriptures be your guide. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 through 7. It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. Whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth. Such an one called up to the third heaven. And I knew such a man... Whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth. How that he was caught up unto paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Um, of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Uh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Do you have a thorn in the flesh, brethren? 
brother, sister out there? Can you name your thorn in the flesh? That thing that you just have prayed to the Lord about time and time again, and it's still there. And the devil just knows how to buffet you with that. Makes you feel bad about it. You're embarrassed about it. It hurts. It brings you lots of sorrow. You suffer and you suffer and you suffer. Why? Keep reading. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Um, you say, is that comforting? Yeah, it's comforting in a way because you realize that uh, the things that I'm going through, there's other brethren that are going through them as well. We all suffer to some degree down here. Um, Jesus Christ had to suffer on the cross. And uh, if he gives you his life, you're going to get some suffering as well. You're to take up your cross and follow the Lord. And uh, again, modern Christianity, it's all about removing that cross, removing suffering. Um, it's a good time, it's fun, it's, it's hip, it's exciting, and whatever else, you know, you just don't dare miss it. Uh, you've been saved for a while, you kind of think, you know, <laughs> sometimes you get to the point where you just say, uh, you know, your flesh says, boy, if I'd have known back then, you know, <laughs> before I got saved, what this life was going to be like, I don't know if I would have done it. And your spirit says, yeah, you would have. You wouldn't want to miss this for the world. You, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's <just> kind of... <laughs> Um, you know what I'm talking about if you've been saved any, any length of time. You've gone through some things. Uh, that's just the way it is. It really is. But you can have comfort. It's so important to understand that, brethren. You can have comfort. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Go to Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. Um, you know how you get established with something, brethren? You know, establish you in every good word and work? You have to live it. Um, you can study this Bible, uh, read it through time and time again, but if you're not living this book, if you can't relate to this book, you'll never be established in it. That's why so many people come along and they'll say, yeah, I used to be King James only, but I'm not anymore. You know why? They were never established. They read it. They looked at the manuscript evidence. A lot of books in through here, all these different books and things. Uh, and they'll read all the textual stuff. And I've known people that have done that. They've read, I've let people borrow my bookshelf right in here, give them stacks of books. They will take it. A month later, they're bringing them back. And wow, I read everything. It's just amazing. Wow. And they fall away. Years later, I hear that they're using new versions, going to some modern church or whatever else, completely abandoned the King James Bible. You know why? Because they never sought comfort in this book. They were never established in this book. That's why. They never learned to suffer for the Lord Jesus Christ. When the suffering comes, the Bible talks about the, those that are uh, the seed that's sown on the, the uh, stony ground or whatever else. They have no root. And so when persecution comes because of the word, they get offended and they fall away. I've seen it time and time again. All the years I've been in ministry, I've known countless people, including relatives of mine, uh, different people, and they fall away. And there isn't anything I can do about it. What more can I say to you? You read, you know manuscript evidence. I've talked to you. I've tried to warn you and tried to counsel you and whatever. And I just, away they go. And you know, well, they found the truth, Brian. You're Because you're a cult leader, you don't know the truth. Uh, no, they didn't find the truth. They went to the lies because they had to find comfort in people and things and church buildings and nice little programs for the children and seminars and all the other stuff that they do. You get out there as a Bible believer and it gets real lonely. Nobody to talk to. 
Sometimes you have the nightmares. Sometimes you have the pains. Sometimes you just feel so let down, so depressed. Sometimes it's hard just to get through the day. But you know what you have? Good hope, comfort through the scriptures. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Be of good comfort. If you have faith in this book, this blessed book, then you have a chance to make it through. You say, well, brother, please listen to me. Most people do not make it. You know why? Because this book says that. Narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Jesus said that. Well, I, brother, I don't agree with you. I think there's a lot of saved people. Then you disagree with Jesus Christ. Then you're rejecting the words of Jesus Christ. He said few, very few, because they find comfort in some other thing, in some other place. That's why. You can find happiness. You can find joy in things of this world. A lot of people like to celebrate Christmas, get rid of the Santa Claus and some of the other things and not make it materialistic and just nice little gifts for each other and things and whatever, fine. Romans chapter 14, you have liberty to do that. Anybody tells you differently, they're lying to you. The Bible talks about let no man judge you in respect of an holy day. Holy day is a Bible word for a holiday. All right, it's written to Gentiles. Okay, Acts chapter 15, there's a council there. What are we supposed to tell them to do? And there's no mentions of you know, getting away from Saturnalia or Easter or anything else. All right, um, please do not twist the scriptures and go against liberty. Uh, you get in trouble with the Lord when you do that. And it's, it sinks more Christians than uh, a lot of other things when you go against the liberty that the Holy Spirit provides. You start to say that you're forced into certain things and whatever else. And a lot of the anti-Christmas arguments, by the way, are just lies. And I've you know, talked about that. But a lot of people find comfort in happiness and things in Christmas time. But you know, a lot of people don't. A lot of people, they go through some pretty rough times, especially with nowadays with the way Christmases are now. Um, you know, I always loved white Christmases. I love to see the snow and the snow on the trees, and there's just something so special about it that makes me think of heaven. The red and the green that's there, the throne and the, the green, there's an emerald or a rainbow that's in sight like unto an emerald that John sees. And the Lord is red, red and green. Northern lights are red and green. You're seeing the light of God of his throne. Um, I know it's magnetic stuff. Whatever. <laughs> uh, stupid evolutionists. But the whole point is here, you can have fun down here on this earth. Um, but you can't just make it all about that. You have to have comfort of the scriptures, brethren. This year, it's about 48 degrees outside right now and raining. And one week from today is Christmas Day. Uh, not really feeling all that great right now. Some of you, it's just, well, that's the way it is down here. We live down south. I get it. But um, you can't let the things of this world be what dictates if you have comfort. You just can't. Uh, and if you do, there's a good chance you're going to fall away. Right? And that doesn't mean you'll be lost. If you're saved, you aren't going to be lost. Okay, uh, I believe in eternal security. Absolutely. Preached on it for years. But the whole point I'm trying to make is, brethren, always go back to the Bible. The scriptures. Comfort of the scriptures. You can have hope. You can have hope in your death. Hey, what's going to happen in 2024? God only knows. I can't put on some kind of uh, special futuristic glasses and look out and, oh, you know, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to you know, write a list of all the people that watch my channel that are going to die in 2024. I don't know. I might be one of them. You might be one. No idea. But you know what? I can read in my Bible and I can have great comfort knowing no matter what happens to this earthly tabernacle here, I'm getting, going to get a new one when I get up there to be with the Lord. So I have to find that fine little edge between um, abusing this body, this earthly tabernacle, and taking care of it. If I take care of it too much, then it starts to get fleshly. <laughs> it starts to get worldly. If I don't take care of it at all and just do ministry, ministry, ministry all the time, then I start to have health issues. It's that war that's there. Galatians chapter 5 talks about it. So you have to understand all this stuff. It's going to take you a long time to study these things. It's going to take you a long time to be established in the Word of God. Don't give up hope. 
So that is going to be it. I hope that this uh, sermon has been a blessing to you. But uh, blind Bartimaeus, another example of the body of Christ being caught up. And if you understand the scriptural tie-ins there, there's, there's stuff in this book, brethren, that people haven't even discovered yet. The greatest scholars that have ever lived haven't even discovered some of this stuff yet. So, read the Word of God. Which brings me to the next sermon, which I will be doing after this one is done. And that is, is it possible to read the Bible too much? It will be an interesting study. And I'm going to do that one coming up next. So we will see you over in that study. Stand by the Bible, brethren. King James Bible. It's your comfort. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17-18. through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Patton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.